Welcome to today's video guys and welcome to the first full video that I'm going to film here in what I'm now going to affectionately call the boat shed. Um, we had a few uh, suggestions given to me you know on the uh, last video when I introduced this place and the boat shed's kind of the one I'm going with for right now. Um, not going to be a at least for this first couple episodes there won't be a or, next couple videos there won't be a ton of boat content to uh, solidify it being uh the boat shed but today's episode i put a poll up of this on my instagram and this is the daily which is pretty rough the hood was repainted at some point um not well everything's chipped and peeled um there was some rust back here that we fixed uh, probably a year or two ago at this point, um, and just put primer on it. And this is nothing, I'm gonna say this is nothing special. Uh, it's a 2003, you know, um, all wheel drive. Uh, it is a manual car, but it's a, uh, it has like 260,000 miles on it already. So for me, another spot of rust. So I have a new fender for that that's already in primer. Uh, but for me, this car is just going to be the daily beater workhorse. Uh, that's how I've been using it for the last year and a half, two years. And I just want it to look a little bit nicer. So in this video, I'm going to be going over a basic spray can paint job. Kind of a scuff and shoot, um, but on a very minimal budget yet something you can do at home. You can do it outside. I've done that already. I did a truck like this. Um, like I said, there's definitely many levels to paint jobs and this one's gonna be, you know, very basic. And I know like spray paint paint jobs get a bad name, but if you take your time and you do many of the other steps along with a, just to make a good paint job, good prep work, you know, things like that, you can get a really decent paint job that will last, you know, say five, six years, which for a car like this, that's already got 260,000 miles on it. That's going to be plenty. And over, you know, spending money on an actual either single stage or, you know, dual stage paint job, even doing it yourself, you know, I'm going to save a couple hundred dollars just by using spray cans. So I'm going to get into it. And uh, first thing is going to be first, I'm going to start stripping, you know, uh, anything that needs to come off, moldings, etc. cetera. Um, this is honestly about a year overdue. I started taking this car apart last December, and then it came down to the, the other vehicle that I have that I was going to drive every day while this was down. That needed an alternator, which I couldn't get, so I ended up having to just keep driving this, and I started another project. So, like, the grills are out. Those have been out for the last year. Um, it probably took me six months before I put all the moldings back on because I realized I wasn't going to get to it right away. So, I'm going to jump back into it where I left off. Um, I'm going to pull side moldings, front moldings, uh, possibly a couple lights and grills, um, and then I'm going to start getting sanding. Since this isn't the first E46 I've done, there's a couple things that I did learn in terms of, so there's a little filler panel underneath the headlight. Uh, I take those off, that way you can get in there nice and deep, and then you can paint those small panels. Uh, the trim is off. You will, so they're supposed to have these little uh, rubber grommets in them, and then the moldings themselves have these plastic clips. And especially on a 20 some year old car, you will break them. That's just kind of part of it. Um, all of the rubber moldings here just literally pull off. You just have to get in behind them. And then like these side markers, 
actually go forward. They like slide forward and then you can get underneath them and pull them out. So just a couple little things I've learned. I'm still gonna pull door handles, uh, pull mirrors, a couple things like that. All right, so I just wanted to show you guys something and actually struggled myself for a minute to remember, but door handles on E46s. You actually don't have to take off the entire door panel to get to anything. It's all made to come in through. So there's an access hole here. There's a plastic piece that uh, just covers it, you know, normally. Now, trying to see if you look inside and up here to the front, that's your first, first thing. There's a bolt right there. Once you take that bolt off, this, uh, this piece will actually come off. You just have to pull the door handle like this and then grab this and it'll pull off. So I'm gonna say that's step one. Okay, I loosen that bolt, which is a T25. And then like I said, this might be hard with a camera. You lift this and then you can pull this piece right out after I throw it on the ground. So there's your first part. Now put that to the side and you need a T15. And if you look right in there, if it wants to focus, um, there's another bolt and you come through this same, you know, same hole here. You can also see it from in here and you want to, uh, I think it's reverse threaded. So when you think you're taking it out, you're actually tightening it, but tightening it the way it's designed actually, I know there's no light. Uh, is what you need to do to loosen it. Is that right? That tightening it pushes it all the way in, which then releases the handle. And then all you have to do is pull out and slide this way because it's, you can see there's a slotted here. So now you got a handle off without having to take a door handle or a door panel apart. Because honestly, that's the only way to do it. Uh, you can't get to those bolts any easier with the door panel off. So that was uh, BMW's intended removal process. And then I just take these uh, rubber, uh, rubber grommets kind of off. Now when you go to paint, you can actually paint nice, fully. You're not trying to tape around, you know, this little rubber bra uh, little rubber uh, uh, gasket basically. And then you just end up with your handles separate which is nice because then you can hang them and you can actually paint on the back side of them pretty nicely. Another top tip to remember because you're moving door handles, remember, roll a window down. That way while you're working around the car, because inevitably you're gonna close a door and it's gonna latch. And now you have to end up digging into the crevice with a pair of pliers to try and get on the door release. Keep a window open. That way, once that door handle's off, you can just reach in, pop it. Okay, another thing I do is in the back, you take the latch, and it's hard to see, but I took a screwdriver, shoved it in there, and I actually closed the latch. That way, when I drop the hatch, the hatch doesn't actually latch. So, now it's sitting there. Also helps a little bit with paint, gives you a gaps on the edges. So you can just let it sit there and the paint as you paint will be able to get in and behind a bit, which then, you know, you won't have such a harsh tape line and it hopefully blends a bit better. But that's again, cause these right here, there's a button and that's your uh, hatch release. Well, if you don't have the hatch release, then uh, you're kind of out of luck. If uh, you gotta climb through the car get the panels off. There's a little button you gotta hit to be able to release the, the hatch. 
All right, ran into a few things on the front that are keeping me from getting it fully dis fully disassembled. Uh, I got something going on with the front bumper. Bolts don't want to come out. I don't have pliers here since I don't have all my tools here. Uh, similar with uh, fender. I was going to swap the fender over right now. Um, can't get that off at the moment. And then once the bumper's off, I'll get the headlights out. Um, I have another set of headlights. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to use them, but... I can do that tomorrow when I come up. Right now, I'm gonna start working on the hood. And I'm just gonna start, you can see, so the hood, the passenger door, and the rear hatch were all off of a same color car um, that I found in a junkyard. Um, this part of the, the car when I got this one was, Everything underneath it was completely rotted, so it was toast, and I needed a whole new rear hatch. Um, the hood is the only one that has failed, I'd say, and so clear coat is peeling off everywhere. Um, it wasn't like this when I got it. Like I said, like I think I put this on like a year and a half ago, and it has now lost all of its clear coat here. And we're down to the base color coat. And over here, we're down to the previous base color coat. So I need to sand this really well. That way I don't paint over top of already bad work. Because um, then it's just going to flake from the bottom. And then you're going to ruin what you just spent time on. So that's going to take the most of the time to get sanded and prepped. I'm going to start on that now. And then I kind of want to get that far enough along that I might be able to spray a uh, primer on that. That way it can dry overnight. And then when I'm back up here tomorrow, I'll get working on the rest of it. So what I'm gonna be using for this is a DeWalt, uh, or I'll... So what I'm gonna be using for this is just a orbital sander. Um, I prefer to use my uh, air powered DA sander, but I don't have air here at the, uh, at the garage yet. And then I'm going to be using a, called an intermediate pad. So really it's just a foam pad um, that goes on to, because um, these have a really like this is foam, but it's super hard. So if you start going over edges with it, you're gonna end up kind of ruining the curves. Um, the soft, so this is like an intermediate. And then I also have soft ones here. Um, so, Interne intermediate, um, inter intermediate pad. Yeah, I say that a couple times. Um, that goes onto the sander first, and then I'm using a 150 to start, especially on the hood. Um, I'm probably only going to use the 150 in the uh, really uh, the spots that really need it. Other than that, um, I have a 220. <coughs> so, like I said, I'm going to go over hood for sure, 150. Um, there's a couple other imperfections places. Um, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there's a couple door dings on this door that I want to go over. Um, just kind of work them out a little bit, a little bondo, get them smooth. But in that, you know, I'll do a coating, probably hit them with 150 to get it smooth, and then 220 again. So I'm going to get the sanding. So we got the hood all sanded up. All the uh, crappy clear coat is off, and I'm going to be using a self-etching primer. Like the etching primer, um, kind of as it says, it etches and it grabs hold of the paint or bare metal. Because um, there's a few spots that, you know, went through. Um, so that primer is going to basically create a new good base coat. Um, I'm going to hit the edges first, close the hood down. Um, I'm going to do at least one full coat. Uh, I'm going to see how much it covers and then, uh, got to check how quick it dries. And then, uh, kind of want to do a second coat before I head home tonight. So hood is in primer and I have to say not the happiest. Um, I took a chance on, so I went to the store and I couldn't, the only primer they had was, a pole and it was a self-etching primer and I would have been fine with a duplicolor or a rust-oleum primer this is all they had 
And instead of going to another store, I just said, how bad can it be? It's just going to be a, you know, prime the hood. So this is unbelievably like patchy. Like, I guess I'll see how it dries tomorrow, but the cans did not cover. Like the spray pattern was terrible. You couldn't get coverage with it. Didn't look like it was covering anything. The first thing I saw, though, was, I mean, that's the can cap color, and it says gray. So I was expecting more of a primer gray. And that is definitely a dark charcoal gray. So that part I'm not terribly upset about, because that one's, uh, at least I know it'll match, um, you know, it's super close to what the body color is now. So when we lay our new color over top, there won't be like, sometimes you can get like, say you paint just scuff and shoot a red fender versus a white, you know, hood in the same color, depending on what the color is, you can see a shade difference because the base underneath is different. So that part, I at least, you know, that shade is super close to the car, which means I won't have that problem, but I'm just hoping this doesn't bring me any other problems and then it also uh, you can't see it right there there was a drip there was like two drips um where it just wanted it was clogging up the nozzle so i guess we'll find out tomorrow when i get back here if i gotta redo that or if this is actually okay either way it needs to get sanded and then uh, and prepped with the rest of the car so say for tonight i'm done for tonight and i'm heading home um Good progress for a day. I say everything stripped down, started sanding, prepped some panels that needed it. So I'll be back tomorrow to uh, work on some more things. It's the next night and I got some work done on it already. Um, I ended up pulling the wheels just to give me some more room underneath. Um, the hood that I primed last night, like I said, it blends well with that, with the uh, kind of stock color paint, but it is very splotchy like i said was not a fan of that uh that primer but it looks like it'll work i got the uh, driver's side fender swapped on um that was primed probably over a year ago um it's just been sitting and waiting the other one was com completely rusted out right in the fender well uh i took the mirrors off i took all the chrome trim around um, that's all going to get redone, uh, in black and it's out of the way to be able to paint the whole car. Uh, I know I did the back half last night, taillights, uh, emblems, everything like that. So the car is fully torn down to as far as I'm going to take it. Um, now we just got to get to sanding. So throw you back on the time lapse and, uh, check back in when I'm done. This half of the car is now sanded. Um, like I said, I used the Orbital and I used the uh, 220 that I had. Basically, I just hit all of the big flat spots. Um, I'm gonna go back in with sandpaper and actually get into all the crevices and that. You don't wanna push any type of you know power sander into those because then you're gonna gouge into the paint. You know, you're no longer gonna have a smooth finish. Even using like the, the DA like this is a little you know, risky, um, but I've gotten away with it before and the type of paint job this will be, I'm not worried. Like I said, this isn't, this isn't going to be a full professional paint job. You know, this is spray cans. This is make a high mileage daily look good for another, say five years, you know, type of deal. Uh, it doesn't need to be, um, expensive. And then other thing I didn't have last night when I sanded or painted, use a regulator. Uh, like, I got home last night, and, you know, you got black boogies, and it's just not worth it. So, always remember, use your PPE, even if it's safety squints. Like I said, I'm going to use uh, Scotch-Brite on the rest of it. Um, 
in all the nooks and crannies and all the hard parts that are to get with the machine, um, you know, with any power sander as well. Watch out for glass and seals. You don't want to get too close to them. You don't want to nick them at all because then you have like this hazing, you know, on your glass that'll never go away because you sanded it. Um, so I'll use this to get into the small spots and then this side will be done. Finished sanding the whole car. So now it's, everything is sanded. I went back over everything with, uh, I just did a quick wash down basically, you know, tiny bit of water out of a spray bottle. Towels got all the loose dust and dirt off of it. That was after I hit it with, uh, like, uh, with air, you know, blew off all the air I could, everything out from the garage and then wiped it all down. Um, it's not the final cleaning it'll get, but now I'm at the point where I'm going to start taping off and at least my rule of thumb for when taping off, um, I want a paint job like this. I'm not worried about door jams. I'm not worried about, you know, um, this being, you know, a hundred percent, you know, the nicest it can be, but 20 footer, you know, from outside and driving down the road. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'll come in like up here because there's trim that wraps around. I'm going to come in and I'll lay a tape line like right above this right here. That way there is no overspray like going in farther. And then I'm going to do the same, you know, on the bottom. I'll pick a line here and then I will tape that across that way when the doors are closed any overspray that does get in through the cracks you want to have enough coverage in there with tape so that it doesn't you know you don't have a feathering you have kind of a solid line um so i'm starting back here anything you can as much as you can tape off because paint will get in everywhere that is if you think it's not going to it will so tape off well so i'm going to tape this whole thing off and then once it's all taped off, I'm going to probably tomorrow, um, I'll tack cloth it, um, do like a wax and, well, wax and grease remover first. That'll be like kind of final prep, tack cloth, and then I can start spraying tomorrow. It's too late tonight to be able to start, get this finished uh, being uh, masked off and uh, actually paint tonight, so... That will be tomorrow's excursion. Car's almost all taped up now. All masked off. Um, I still got a few more places to do, but I want to get home. Um, I'm going to have to spend some time in here anyways tomorrow morning to let the heater get some heat going before I can even start painting. So there's really no point to finish the taping off when I can do that tomorrow. So tomorrow I can... Finish masking off, and then I can do the final wipe down tack, and then get to painting tomorrow. So that'll be in the next video. Um, so stay tuned for the next one. See what color it's actually going to get painted. Um, and I guess for this video, this one is your captain out.